Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over magnetic fields and magnetic field patterns. So let's get started. We're going to look at some typical magnetic field patterns and then we'll look at some applications of magnetic fields. The first thing we need to be aware of is that any magnet will have a magnetic field around it. And the magnetic field itself is defined as a region of space around the magnet where another magnet will experience a force. This is very similar to the definition for electric field, which is the region of space around a charge where another charge will experience a force. So all we're doing is swapping out the word charge for electric fields for the word magnet for magnetic fields. Just like there are two types of charge, positive and negative, magnets have two poles, which are the north and south poles. Opposite poles attract and like poles repel each other. And at higher level you saw the magnetic field patterns for an isolated bar magnet between two opposite adjacent poles and between two like adjacent poles as shown below here. So these are just presented as a reminder. So for an isolated bar magnet we have the north and south pole and we can draw the magnetic field lines curving from the north to the south pole round the bar magnet like this. And you'll notice the field lines are going from north to south and that's because field lines will always go out of a north pole and into a south pole. And then either side of the bar magnet the lines are still curved but they're going out of the north pole and into the south pole. For two opposite poles next to each other we have the north and south pole here and you'll notice that each bar magnet has its own north and south poles and again we see a similar thing to what we saw for the isolated bar magnet where the field lines are curved from north to south and they're going out of north and into south at either side. However the bit in the middle is the new part where we've got the field lines going from north to south with a straight line in the middle there and then they start curving round and curving round. So the lines are going out of the north pole there and into the south pole. And lastly for two like poles adjacent, this could be two south poles like shown here or two north poles adjacent to each other. And in this case you'll notice we have the same thing as last time where we have the curved lines from north to south and the curved lines from north to south and then these lines on the left going out of the North Pole and these lines on the right going out of the North Pole again. But in the middle we have a different kind of shape here which shows that the field lines are being repelled away from each other. And because these ones are both South Poles we have the field lines going in towards the South Poles. So just some rules to remember when drawing magnetic field lines. The relative spacing of the field lines indicate the field strength. If the lines are closer together there is a strong magnetic field whereas if the lines are further apart we say there is a weak magnetic field. And this is similar to the rule for electric field lines. And also when drawing magnetic field lines the arrows are drawn to show the direction that a north pole would move if placed in that field. This means that they will always go from north to south i.e. out of a north pole and into a south pole and that's what we've been showing in our diagrams. Moving on we're going to look at the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. So if a current flows through a current carrying conductor such as a wire then a circular magnetic field will be produced around the wire. The direction of the magnetic field depends on the direction of current flow and we can determine this direction using something called the left hand grip rule. So for the case of current flowing out of the page or in your case out of the screen then we can demonstrate this direction by using a little circle with a dot in the middle and the dot represents current coming out of the page or out of the screen. So if I want to determine the direction of the circular magnetic field around the wire then I need to point my thumb in the direction so in this case it's out of the page like this which means my fingers curl around in a clockwise direction. So you'll see that I have these arrows going round showing the direction of the magnetic field lines. However for current flowing into the page we can represent this with a little circle with a cross in the middle. And this represents current going into the page or into the screen in this case. So again we can use the left hand grip rule. So if I take my left hand and point it in towards the page or into the screen in this case then my fingers will curl round in the direction of the magnetic field lines which is going in this direction here. And a handy hint for using the left hand grip rule is to imagine that you're holding the wire in your left hand with your thumb pointing in the same direction as the current flow. Your fingers will curl round to give the direction of the magnetic field around the wire. Lastly we're just going to look at two applications of magnetic fields. So the first one is a magnetic field around a solenoid. And so this says that if a current carrying wire is formed into a coil it will create a magnetic field like a bar magnet. At the centre of the solenoid there will be an almost uniform magnetic field. The strength of this magnetic field can be increased by wrapping it around an iron core or by increasing the number of turns on the wire. The shape of the magnetic field will be the same as that created around a bar magnet as shown below. So here we've got our diagram of a solenoid, here's our coil of wire wrapped around an iron core in the middle. So you'll notice the shape of the magnetic field pattern looks the same as that for an isolated bar magnet that we saw earlier. And in this case the current is flowing from negative to positive here, so it's flowing through this wire and then it's going round in the coil and then it's coming out here. And we've said that there's a uniform magnetic field set up in the solenoid 
solenoid in the centre. Lastly, it says to note that the direction of the field is dependent on the direction of the current flow through the solenoid. So in this case, the uniform magnetic field will be going from right to left, so it will be pointing through in this direction. Lastly, we have the magnetic field around the Earth. It says that there is also a magnetic field surrounding the Earth. It is thought that this is created by electric currents generated by the movement of the Earth's molten metallic core. The geographic south pole is a magnetic north pole, as shown down here. It is attracted to the geographic north pole, which is up here, which is a magnetic south pole, since opposite magnetic poles attract. So in a sense, we can visualise the Earth as a big isolated bar magnet, where we've got the field lines going into the magnetic south pole, and the field lines going out of the magnetic north pole. And then the lines curve round in the middle, just like they did for the isolated bar magnet. It then says that without a magnetic field around the Earth, our atmosphere would have been stripped away a long time ago by the solar wind, which is a stream of charged particles which escape from the sun. These particles are deflected around the Earth by its magnetic field. So the Earth's magnetic field is necessary for life to exist on Earth because it helps to retain our atmosphere. Lastly, it says to note that the Earth's magnetic field is not fixed in position. The position of the magnetic north and south poles drifts and every few hundred thousand years will completely reverse. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.